Thank you so much for being here. We are continuously blown away by the love and support of our community. So I know some of you are on the crew and some of your extended community and some of you probably don't know us at all and we're just so happy you're here. And um, we're so excited to share this project with you. you ready? Ready. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. It's doing the mouse thing. <laughs> No, we're, no, we're good that. at other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I we're really good at building stuff. <laughs> They're tired. <laughs> Far off at sea, a ship makes its way to an unknown destination. Its captain is holed up in her quarters, likely writing in one of her journals of some marine oddity she saw today, or a botanical or archaeological discovery at her last port of call. She travels the world in search of oddities, treasures, and knowledge, and she always keeps an eye out for a sea serpent she's heard about from other sailors. But the captain herself isn't even aware of all the secrets of the artifacts she's carrying on her ship. Little does she know, a sea serpent is following her ship day and night, sworn to protect that same treasure she carries in her hold. We may never know exactly what happened right before we come across the scene. An accident of some kind has occurred, a shipwreck. Cargo is spilling into the ocean, and a sea serpent looms above, watching intently. Has the serpent sunk the ship or come to help? And what do we know of the enigmatic captain from her quarters? And what stories do we discover in the treasure chests floating into the waves? This is the story of Naga and the Captainess, which will be making its debut at Burning Man 2024 yep. and beyond. Yeah. So people ask where the idea came from. What is the origin of this story? <laughs> That's to scale, too. <laughs> to scale. <laughs> Insults. <laughs> Uh, this started with my favorite childhood book. I found, I was going through, my mom died, I was going through her things maybe 10 years ago, Cyrus the Unsinkable Sea Serpent. And in this story, Cyrus is a loser. He floats around the ocean all day eating sardines. He doesn't know what to do with his life. And one day the shark comes up to him and says, you are such a loser, you couldn't even sink a ship. And he says, well, I'll show you. I, I can sink the next ship that leaves this pier. So he goes and waits by the pier for the next ship. And he, as the ship is leaving, this old man says, well, you'll never make it. And these are just poor people that are, that are going to find uh, their fortunes elsewhere. And so Cyrus thinks, what a terrible thing for him to say. Immediately, he forgets he's supposed to sink the ship, and he follows them to make sure they're going to be OK. And sure enough, as the old man predicted, they hit trouble. They hit the doldrums. And so in the middle of the night, Cyrus blows on their sails and blows them out of the doldrums. And then next they hit a storm, and so he wraps his body around the ship and holds his breath and puffs himself up and becomes unsinkable and gets them through the storm. But then they get attacked by pirates, and so he sinks the pirate ship. But now they're really in trouble. Their mast is broken. And so they're, they're just in the middle of the ocean, and they're in trouble. And so he reveals himself, and everyone says, oh, no, a monster will surely kill us. And he starts pulling on their anchor chain, and they say, oh, no, he'll take us back to his lair, and he'll eat us, and we're goners for sure. But then after a while, they realize that they think he's trying to help. And so he pulls their ship day and night uh, for weeks. And then he finally gets them to shore. And he finds out what it's like to be a hero. Yeah! <laughs> and then he goes to an island and sleeps for a whole month. <laughs> Just like us after Burning Man. <laughs> So for me, Cyrus is absolutely the heart of the story. But when I thought about making a sculpture, he's not really the aesthetic that I was looking for. And I wanted a little bit more of a grown-up myth, too. So I started looking around for what was out there. So I looked through all the sea serpent myths in the West and, and most of the art. And it, it just wants to eat you. Everything looks mean. It's angry. <laughs> um, I looked through like, everything. There, there's the Norse Jormungandr. There's Tiamat from Old Babylon. Leviathan from the Old Testament. Tisaruk from the Inuit. There's the Hydra that Hercules killed. And the seven-headed sea serpent from Scylla and Charybdis. And all of these, even though they have deep, deeper backstories, they just wanted to eat anyone that passed by. <laughs> well, gosh, there's got to be something else out there. And so I looked to the east. And in the east is where I found Nagas. 
Nagas are legendary throughout Southeast Asia. There are thousands of them there in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and the mythology and folklore stretching back for a very long time. So Nagas are often deities. At the very least, they're magical creatures who are half human, half serpent, or they're shapeshifters. They're generally associated with water. Sometimes they protect waterways, and sometimes they reside in jeweled palaces at the bottom of the sea. They're powerful, they're clever, they're generally benevolent, but they can cause some trouble. But their mission, their job, is to keep treasure or knowledge safe from people who would misuse it. And so, finally I had a direction for who Cyrus could be as a more grown-up sea serpent. Um, so I loved this. Instead of Cyrus just being a doofus do-gooder, he could be a noble, treasure-protecting serpent with, on a mission. Um, now, to be clear, I'm not making a Naga. I'm not taking the Naga concept as a whole. Um, this is not a shape-shifting Eastern deity. It's just kind of like the name. <laughs> I wanted, everyone's going to assume that the sea serpent sunk the ship, and I wanted to name it something so people would maybe think there was more to the story and dig in a little bit. So it's just for inspiration. And so, many of you already know, we have Naga drawn by the amazing Imogen Spear. Um, I tried very hard to make him really unique and, you know, of, of no particular culture. So he's a, the Naga for everyone. Um, and then we've been <laughs> <laughs> and so lucky to have Grant Diff and Daffer do these you know, translations into the digital realm. Yeah. And so we have um, our first digital draft of Naga, and we have another one that uh, we didn't have time to get in here today. We have an incredible team. I mean, it's been what, an engineer, a CAD person, three different illustrators, just... You know, the, the scope of this project is so huge. Uh, we're, so we're, we're starting to build him now. He's pretty big. That's his head. Uh, we've got some amazing people. Yeah. So that's scales to scale. Um, some beautiful paint. So excited to talk more about him. But Naga is just half of this story. And so I would like to talk about the captainess and her ship. And for that, our lead shipwright and ship architect are here. <laughs> It's still you there. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm tall. <laughs> and so enters the captainess. Our captainess is an explorer, adventurer, and botanist. She has traveled to many continents, collecting plants, specimens, and artifacts along the way. She has a particular interest in sea serpents, keeping newspaper clippings, notes from conversations she's had with other sailors, and drawings of things she's seen in the distance. And of course, she does it all in style. <laughs> Our ship, which is named the Aldrovanda, has been constructed by the captainess herself. She's been collecting or crafting bits and pieces and building it up over time. Pieces are inspired by different styles, even different time periods. Its stern will be reminiscent of galleons with ornate details, multiple levels, a series of windows and balconies. There will be an upper deck accessed by two staircases and doors leading to an interior. The bow, however, is modeled after the smaller and more maneuverable frigate ships. It's got a bit of a war look, a little tough, and will feature a figurehead at the bowsprit. The interior of our captainess's quarters will be accessible up a steeply pitched deck. That's right, you're gonna have to work your way to get into it. <laughs> Rich and lush, it will showcase her personal collection of treasure and artifacts collected from all over the world. The captain's desk will be covered in her journals, sea logs, and maps, and will also include her wardrobe filled with clothing from her adventures. Opportunities for ornate details are everywhere. There will be elaborate railings, balusters, moldings, paintings, fabrics, lanterns, and a colorful compass rose inlaid into the deck. The ship's cargo will be spilling out across the playa, including many crates and chests, and we're excited to invite artists to fill each of these with their idea of treasure. So many of you have seen the drawings. Some of you are working on the project. This may not be quite the big reveal that it used to be. <laughs> mm. <laughs> ah. We're doing very good, everybody. 
<laughs> so our ship is in pieces. Oh no, there's been a calamity. The stern is still above the waterline, allowing our captainess's quarters to remain dry for the moment. Two masts, one of which you can climb up via the rope rigging to a crow's nest and spyglass that points out to other treasure. The bow is broken into two pieces with its bowsprit and figurehead rising out of the playa. Scattered around the shipwreck will be treasure and cargo, which will appear to be floating. Uh, so Naga's body will be painted, and I've been talked into having gold leaf tips because Tanya saved us like $20,000 on paint. <laughs> Uh, night, whiskey casks will illuminate the scene with fire, creating a place for weary travelers to gather. And the treasure and the captain's quarters will all glow with light, and the serpent also will glow from his belly and all of his scales. And so this is us, for those of you who are wondering. <laughs> Uh, for those who don't know, we are the leads of this project. Uh, we are all professionals in our field of building. Uh, so I'm CJ Roughgarden. I am the chief instigator here. I'm an artist, an architectural metal fabricator. I make public art, fire sculptures, gates, handrails, staircases, uh, and what I consider to be functional art. <laughs> I have a shop in Richmond at Seaport Studios, and my company, Element 26, builds my work and work of other artists. Uh, for example, this one last year I did for Sharon Fedrini. Hi, I'm Steph Shipman. I'm a woodworker, carpenter, teacher, and big art builder. Uh, <laughs> I also have a shop at Seaport Studios where I teach building classes for my business, and I built it with my vagina. <laughs> and <laughs> Shipman Designs, which I make custom furniture and art for people. And I work in theater and film, uh, doing set design, production design. These are some of my sets. Uh, you may also know me for all of my miniatures that I yeah. provide to the playa. <laughs> um, the three of us met through Five Ton Crane, a group uh, known for making some of the highest quality and most immersive art pieces on playa. Projects like the Raygun Gothic ship, the steampunk treehouse, the boots, and even a piece for the fucking Smithsonian. <laughs> if you don't already know Five Ton Crane, you should go check them out uh, at their website, fivetoncrane.org. We are so grateful to them, our artistic friends, our colleagues, our mentors, and the level of quality we aspire to uphold as we carry on this legacy. And now our crew. How many crew crew here? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> our crew is just incredible. It's a mix of veterans and new volunteers. We have people who are industry professionals, people who might be on their second or third decade of building big art for Burning Man or public art who are doing this professionally. And then we also have new volunteers who have never held a drill or built anything before and coming in with just creativity. And it's so exciting to put them together and see the magic that happens. Um, here's our, our welding class. We're doing, we've done two rounds of TIG welding classes already. Uh, because the real project here is not just the art we're building in the end, which we're very excited about, but it's also the community we're creating. We've been so blessed with Five Ton Crane to feel like we have a real village. And what's so special, I think, is that in everyday life, we're usually just around people who are just like us. And on a project like this, it takes so many different skill sets. So we're bringing together engineers and artists and illustrators and craftspeople and performers. And when we see what we've all done together, it really makes what feels like a village. And I'm really excited to be helping rebuild our little Five Ton Crane community and the Oakland Arts community and get so many new people um, together and, and getting to know that we can all be creative and we can all, we can all, we all have something to contribute. It's not just artists who can make art. Uh, and we're even getting the kids in there, which we're really excited about to start them off young. So we're incredibly excited to bring this to life for you on Playa and beyond. Um, we've got some real great art allies. Ben Davis is here tonight. He's really advocating for us. Yeah. 
of Illuminate advocating for us to get a local placement after this, which we're really hoping for. Um, we're building everything to the highest quality standards. So certified welds, everything is engineered, um, which all costs a lot, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is why we're here tonight. Uh, so we do have a pretty big fundraising goal. We have a goal of $25,000. 250. 250. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. How'd that happen? Zeros. It's, hard to, it's hard to wrap your head around it sometimes. <laughs> so of that $250,000, we are almost halfway there. We were about 45%. This event itself might just push us over to that halfway mark. So we're lucky to have been given one of the largest honorarium grants from Burning Man this year. We have amazing, yeah, thank you so much donors who have donated early to get us started so we could buy materials. Um, we have a Kickstarter that's going on with great swag. Um, and we have a tax deductible 501c3, 5 ton crane, uh, which is offering both in-kind and monetary write-offs. So please think about that. Um, our, our biggest impediment in the project right now is that we have to budget ourselves when we're building. It's like, well, can we afford to buy this? Can we afford to buy that? What can we get right now? And figuring out how to get those funds rather than just building. Um, it would be amazing to have the time and energy just to really focus on the art and focus on training people up. So thank you so much for being here and buying these tickets. Anything further you contribute really helps us out, and we're super grateful. Uh, we've got, gosh... Uh, shipping alone is about $35,000 for all the semi-trucks it's going to take to move this to Playa and back. Damn. Yeah, just the <laughs> structural steel for Naga is probably about $20,000, you know. Um, we've got lighting, we've got paint, and we're, we're doing so much on a budget, we're accepting donations, and that's all great, but there's still a lot more to go. So um, thank you again. Is there anything else? No. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs>